Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here. We're back doing a Swiss Magic Origins draft. We've got Stalwart Aven and Fleshbag Marauder, as I think my two best options are. Um, they're both pretty good. I'm actually not sure which one I think is better. I mean... I think Stalwart Aven's likely better, but there's some good synergies with Fleshbag Marauder. Cruel Revival brings it back. Works well with Act of Treason. Um, there's no real, like, synergies with Stalwart Aven. It's just a good, you know, three drop. It's just a solid three drop. So, Fleshbag Marauder, I gotta be honest, I kind of want the Fleshbag, but I think... I think there's a strong argument for Stalwart Aven, but I'm I'm still gonna take the Fleshbag Marauder. Who knows? Maybe we won't even end up in black. All right. Well, Molten Vortex is an awesome card, so we're gonna take that. Don't even really have to look at the rest. Although Tower Geist is good, and Deadbridge Shaman stays on color and actually works pretty well with Marauder, but we're gonna take Molten Vortex for sure. Wow. Past Coast Fed, huh? All right. And a cool revival? Jeez. What doesn't this pack have? Well, we're going to take Koth of Ed. Just people really hate black in this pack? Or what was in this pack? I kind of want to know. But we're going to take Koth of Ed over cool revival because it's pretty bomb rare. All right. Feels like a pretty easy unholy hunger now. Stay with our black picks. Alright, options now. I like Totem Guide Heart of Beast, although we don't have any synergies with it yet. And the card that it works well with doesn't work well with Fleshbag Marauder. Could just take the Shambling Ghoul. Stays on color. It's weaker than Separatist Void Mage, but I kind of want to solidify myself in black here. I think Void Mage is better, though. Maybe a fifth pick Void Mage is possibly a sign I should be in blue-black? Void Mage is pretty awesome. It's certainly better than Shambling Ghoul. But if I don't end up in blue, I'm, I'm going to be sad I don't have a Shambling Ghoul. It is a really nice two-drop. And it kind of abandons ship on Molten Vortex, which is definitely a card I'd like to play. But I um, haven't seen a ton of red. I think I'm going to go Ghoul, even though Void Mage, like I said, is a stronger card. I just feel like I'm at this point I'm for sure in, in uh, black. So if I'm in for... If I'm in black for sure, let's take a very playable two-drop, which are, you know, very important in this format. And uh, it also continues to cut black from these packs, which dissuades others from jumping in that color. All right. It's claustrophobia. Another Chandra's Fury in red. No black card I care about. There is an Evolutionary Leap, though, which uh, works reasonably well with stuff and things in general, but I guess it finds Koth of Fed. Claustrophobia does not work well with Fleshbag Marauder. Let's just take the rare, whatever. I could just take Chandra's Fury too, I guess. Try and hope that Molten Vortex can be made to work. Maybe out of pack two, pick up red cards. Alright, I'll, I'll take the Fury. I think Leap is good too, though. Alright, I guess we can take Consecrated by Blood. I don't love it, but it's playable, especially in the black-red sack deck. If we can make the pieces of that come together. Alright, Iblight Assassin's a good wheel, so we'll take that. Although Nantuko Husk is, I guess, the more appropriate card for red-black, isn't it? We want some sack outlets. I guess we could take Husk. Assassin kills things right up, but we'll, we'll take the husk. All right. Instantly rewarded with Eyeblight Assassin anyway, so. Disciple this late. That's pretty good. Pretty late in Shrouding Mist, which is also good, but at least we're getting late black cards. Jeez. That is a very late Deadbridge Shaman. Um, I guess I don't really care about any of these cards. I don't want to play Slug. I don't really want to play Brawler's Plate. Guess we take the Recluse. 
Thornbow Archer. Well, it's not a great card, but I guess I'll take it. Cobwaltz, sure, we'll cut black. Well, we are definitely in black. Dark Dabbling. All right, well, there was that draft a couple drafts ago where I got wrecked by the Dark Dabbling deck, so maybe it's playable. Well, it is for sure playable. It's just never super exciting. I guess we could leave Macabre Waltz in for now, too. I, don't, I shouldn't really have an issue with that. All right. Uh, I'd still like to go red just because I really do think Molten Vortex is that strong of a card. So if we're going to pick up red cards, I think it's our only chance is probably going to be out of pack two here since... It definitely seemed like red was dry in pack one, outside of the first, you know, our second pick being a Molten Vortex. Um, that would indicate to me that pack three, we're certainly not going to see much red either. But uh, it definitely looks like a deck where we can, you know, focus on black and then supplement with red. Like, we have a Husk, a Marauder, and a Consecrated by Blood. Three pretty excellent tools in the Steel and Sack deck. Um, all right, I'll take a gear crafter here. It works well with the uh, husk and marauder, so I like that. Good green cards in here. Undead servant, but I'm not the biggest fan of that card, although it does synergize well with husk. Uh, I'd still rather have a gear crafter. And nothing else in here is too terribly good, so all right. Gear crafter it is. Woodland Bellower. Isn't that worth a couple tickets? It's like seeing constructed play. It's worth close to two tickets. It finds, like, everything in our deck, too. Otherwise, I'm taking another Shambling Ghoul. Are we supposed to be in green? I probably just want the Shambling Ghoul if I want to win, but two tickets. And maybe I... Maybe I end up in green still. I mean, I still could potentially make green black work. Bellower is certainly good. Like I said, it finds essentially all of our important creatures. But Ghoul is a little more consistent. And actually, Lightning Javelin is good too. Solid red removal. I'm going to take the two tickets. All right. Immediately passed a Naturalist. Which is good. Another gear crafter. I think I'm just going to take the Woodland Bellower for two ticks and try and continue down the black red path. I, I'd rather, I'd rather go for the vortex plan than go for green black. I think because I do think vortex is that good. Um, so I think we just take gear crafter here. Second one. Very strong card. All right. Call the Full Moon. Some people like that quite a bit. I'm not entirely sure I'm sold on it. I think it's okay. Boggard Brute's good. I think we're going to take a second on Holy Hunger, though. Take some removal. Uh... Nothing too exciting for us here. I could take a second Chandra's Fury. I don't love it. Could take a Goldforge Sentinel, but don't really love that either. Guess we could take Chandra's Fury. There might be, even if I don't main deck them both, there might be a match where I want them both. All right, I think we take the Fetid Imp here. Firefiend Elemental is pretty good too, but Imp, I think, buys us a little more time. And our deck Looks to be pretty good in the late game with Kothafed and Molten Vortex. Fetter Dimp number two, sure thing. Let's take out the Dark Dabbling. Probably take out Thornbow Archer. We don't really look like we're... That beat down. Blightcaster with Consecrated by Blood, nothing else. Oh, Molten Vortex. All right, well, 
just turns out there's nothing else anyway, so all right, we'll take it. Maybe we get a weight of the underworld or two. Currently, it looks like we're not going to need the Macabre Waltz, and pretty likely we're not going to need two Chandra's Fury, but that's okay. Yeah, that's a lot of Chandra's Furies. I don't think we need Meteorite. Frika's Disciple in green is good. Probably just take the Veteran Sidearm for sideboard. So out of this last pack, we need seven playables. And they're likely mostly going to be black. Lightning Javelin Wheels. Sure thing. All right, we already got the Veteran Sidearm. I'll hate an Orchard Spirit, I guess. Bloodlust would prefer to not play it, but we'll take it in case we need it. Deck looks pretty good. We haven't gotten anything to steal with for the Husk, but... it's a chance we find something. Bloodsucker might actually make the deck. Possibly. Never really excited by Bloodsucker, but I'm not going to say it's impossible. Foil, Dark Petition, and a Hyxis. Jeez. Well, I think the pick for us is Reeve Soul and hope to wield the Act of Treason. Hyxis is very strong. Dark Petition, on the other hand, not that good. I don't think the Foil one's worth anything. It almost looked like it was worth less than the original, if that makes any sense. But we're going to take Reeve Soul because great card. Great Blade Marauder is good. Could take a second Reeve Soul. Great Blade Marauder is really good at holding down the fort. Which I think this deck likes more. But I mean, Reeve Soul just kills things, which is also really good. But Great Blade Marauder is cool. The card is really good. Works well with Husk, Marauder. Kind of Consecrated by Blood to a certain extent. But to be honest, I guess I'd almost prefer to not end up playing the Blood. I think I'm going to take the rare over the the good removal. Because a 1-4 death touch for 3 really does hold down the fort well. Could take the bully. We don't really seem like a beatdown deck too much. We actually look like we could be a beatdown deck, but... I'd probably rather just have a second husk, I guess. Like I said, it works well with the gear crafters. It's kind of decent defensively. Bully, I don't like that I have to attack each turn. All right, Husk is fine. Well, it seems a bit late to start taking Undead Servants, so I guess we'll take a second Assassin, which is fine. I think I want to read the Bones here. There is a Deadbridge Shaman, but read the Bones is just really good. Fleshbag Marauder number two seems fine. I'd probably run it over Blightcaster in this deck. A lot of three drops, but that's not a huge deal. Removal Light? No, I guess not. Reeve Soul, Molten Vortex, Double Marauder, Lightning Javelin, Double Hunger, Chandra's Fury. No, as a matter of fact, we're... Pretty solid on removal. Double Assassin, too. The Fleshback Marauders are going to work really well with the Marauder, so I like that. That's kind of cool. And Fetid Imps are made to be killed as well, so... I do actually think Great Blade Marauder looks good in here. And this deck looks fine right now. I don't think we're going to play Thornbow Archer, so I'm just going to hate... What I think is the best card in here, which might be the Cleric, just because it's a two-drop two drop creatures. Might of the Masses could be annoying, too, but I'm, I'm going to hate the, the Cleric here. So, what's the weakest card in my deck that I might want to upgrade? I probably don't need double Nantuko Husk, especially since we didn't get Active Treason. So, even Consecrated by Blood is... Not the best, although it's kind of cool with Husk, I guess. But I'd prefer to not play Consecrated by Blood. Maybe I can just swap that into a second Chandra's Fury and be okay with that. Chandra's Fury, is, I mean, if you do a couple back-to-back, -back, that's a lot of damage. Do 
Titan Strength. There we go. That's actually a really nice pickup here. I'm going to run that over the Consecrated by Blood. I'm a big proponent of pump spells in this format. I already have Macabre Waltz. Uh, Water Courser is good. I think Empath might be the strongest card remaining, though. Prickle Boar. I think I'd play that over Bloodsucker, actually. Or, actually, maybe I do cut the husk, one of the husks for the Prickle Boar. I don't like husk that much in this deck. Like I said, it works well with the Gear Crafters. It's okay with the Shaman. Other than that, it's not like it's busted at all. Prickle Boar, on the other hand, is, is actually... I mean, granted, it gives us five, five drops, which might seem a bit excessive, but I think it's actually fine. Um, guess Mighty Leap might be the one to hate. I'm going to hate the Might over the Screeching Scab. Recluse, sure. Okay. So I think our deck's fine. I think it ended up just fine. We have some cool cards in here. Um, plenty of removal, as a matter of fact. Plenty of ways to deal with stuff. Good amount of finishers. Graveblade Marauder gets better in the late game. Molten Vortex definitely wins games in the late game. Kothafed is certainly another way to win. Pricklebore can do a lot of work. Bloodsucker's not the ideal finisher, but I think it's the best option we got out of the other cards. Otherwise, I could play like Macabre Waltz, maybe over Bloodsucker to bring back Fleshbag Marauders. What do I think about that? It's not bad. Bring back gear, cra uh, gear crafter too. Bring back fetid imps. Hmm. Maybe macabre bolts is better than bloodsucker in this deck. I don't love macabre bolts, but I certainly don't love bloodsucker either. Uh. And yeah, in fact, and I'm running read the bones. I'm gonna cut bloodsucker, and I think we're we're gonna try out macabre bolts again. This time I'm going to try not to uh, play my land before I play it. You do have to discard with Macabre Waltz, but lesson learned on that one. All right, let's add some lands here. I guess we sort by color. Oops, cancel. All right, so more black than red, obviously, but we need double red for Molten Vortex, but we definitely need double red to cast stuff, so... I'm probably still okay doing 9-8, but maybe 10-7 is more correct. Although, we do need that red on turn 3. I think 10-7 I think should be fine. Yeah, because we need double black for the Fetid Imps, too. I'm doing 10-7. Alright, this deck's fine. Nothing crazy. I certainly think it's acceptable, though. So, we'll run it like this, and we'll see you guys round 1.